In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hello again, everybody, and welcome today to our Mass for Wednesday of the 20th week in Ordinary Time. And so, my brothers and sisters, in order to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you, good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things, and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading today is taken from the book of Judges. All the citizens of Shechem and all Beth Milo came together and proceeded to make Abimelech king by the terebinth at the memorial pillar in Shechem. When this was reported to him, Jotham went to the top of Mount Gerizim and standing there cried out to them in a loud voice, Hear me, citizens of Shechem, that God may then hear you. Once the trees went to anoint a king over themselves, so they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree answered them, Must I give up my rich oil, whereby men and gods are honored, and go to wave over the trees? Then the trees said to the fig tree, Come, you reign over us. But the fig tree answered them, Must I give up my sweetness and my good fruit, and go to wave over the trees? Then the tree said to the vine, Come, you, and reign over us. But the vine answered them, Must I give up my wine that cheers gods and men, and go to wave over the trees? Then all the trees said to the buckthorn, Come, you, reign over us. But the buckthorn replied to the trees, If you wish to anoint me king over you in good faith, come and take refuge in my shadow. Otherwise let fire come from the buckthorn, and devour the cedars of Lebanon. The word of the Lord. Response is, Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. O Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. In your victory, how greatly he rejoices. You have granted him his heart's desire. You refuse not the wish of his lips. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. For you welcomed him with goodly blessings. You placed on his head a crown of pure gold. He asked life of you. You gave him length of days forever and ever. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. Great is his glory in your victory. Majesty and splendor you conferred upon him. You made him a blessing forever. You gladdened him with the joy of your face. Lord, in your strength, the King is glad. Alleluia, alleluia. The Word of God is living and effective, able to discern the reflections and thoughts of the heart. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off, and he went out again around noon and around three o'clock, and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, he found others standing around and said to them, 
Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more. But each of them also <clears throat> got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones work, <clears throat> worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's, heat, the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> so our Gospel today is a rather interesting story, and certainly a well-known one, where we have people who seem to be uh, day laborers uh, hiring themselves out for work at various vineyards, and then <clears throat> some are hired at 9 o'clock, some are hired around noon, some are hired at 3, and some <clears throat> are hired at 5. So it would seem, you know, by the standards of you know, economics and really our justice, that the people who worked at 5, or started working at 5, would, would get paid the, the least. And the people working at 9 and throughout the whole day would get paid the most. But the landowner doesn't <clears throat> do it that way. Remember, the kingdom of, <clears throat> of heaven is, link, is like this kind of situation. And <clears throat> the landowner gives all of these people, whether they started at 9 or started at 5, and everything in between, he gave them the same amount of money. Now, <clears throat> there is a connotation to this story that uh, the people who started work later in the day were somehow working some sort of scam or they were lazy, or they just didn't work as hard. But think about the, <clears throat> excuse me, the kind of person who would sit around all day, or stand around rather, all day, uh, looking for work in the middle of the desert in Jesus' day, in his era. Uh, that kind of person is not the kind of person looking for some kind of handout. This is a person who is looking for work, wants to work, and just has the simple misfortune of being chosen you know, last or later in the day, and wasn't one of the people that was picked first. Excuse me. And what Jesus, and, and in effect the landowner here is saying, is that the people who were hired later deserve really some kind of stepping stone, some kind of helping hand, something to reward them really for their intention. Because remember, as Jesus says all throughout the scripture is that what God really sees is not our exterior actions, but our intentions. God knows that these people were standing there all day looking for work and wanted to work the whole day, but they simply just had the misfortune to be chosen later. I know the parallel that always, when I see this story, the parallel that always comes to my mind is the number of friends that I had who uh, went to get graduate degrees in the humanities and wanted to be professors but had the misfortune of going to graduate school and getting their PhDs just after the recession happened. And the job market for professors at universities had changed dramatically in 2012 versus 2006 or 7 when they started these programs. And through no fault of their own, when they got out and needed a job, those jobs weren't there, or they were available later, or there was something different about it than what they had hoped for or what they had really signed on to. So they weren't working some kind of scheme either, just like these people hired later in the day weren't working some kind of scheme. They just simply needed some kind of helping hand and some kind of acknowledgement that yes, they had been out here too and had been putting forth a reasonable amount of effort as well. And whether they got lucky or not is through no fault of their own. So I think with this gospel in mind, let us keep that uh, as a point of prayer today, that when we see people who, you know, have been like these people hired at five o'clock and gotten you know, a, a, a decision that was not you know, what they wanted, but through no fault of their own, just experienced some bad luck. Let us pray to be more open-minded and compassionate to them, to reach out to them, and to be open to doing what we can 
to be like this landowner to help them in their need. So let us now offer our intentions to God. We pray for Pope Francis, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, for them and their intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for this parish, for all those who work here, worship here, for all those who come here, for them and their intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. And as we get closer to school reopenings, we pray for all those who work in schools, for all, the, for all students, and all parents of students going back to school. For them and their intentions, let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for Mary Ann Blake, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. And good and gracious God, we ask you to hear our prayers and to grant them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, <clears throat> to receive our oblation, O Lord, by which has brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through our Lord Jesus, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, Yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, 
and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Blaise our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.